Hey guys, Denise here from Thorzone. Today we're gonna build an air cooled system in Mjolnir. So if you don't know what Mjolnir is, it's a very compact, high-end mini ITX case that lets you use full-sized PC hardware. It's launching on Kickstarter on November 26, 4 p.m. Central European time. For those backing us the first hour, we'll give away a Mjolnir R that is RGB with both performance and tempered glass panels. All right, let's start. First, here are a couple things that we're gonna need. An anti-static bracelet that's connected to a grounded sword some pliers, Phillips screwdriver, somewhere to put all screws, a plastic card, thermal paste, Noctua NTH1, some great stuff, and the included hex keys. Let's go over the hardware. For our GPU, we got RTX 2070 Turbo from Asus. Next is SF600 from Corsair, which is an awesome little SFX power supply. Motherboard is said 370 n Wi-Fi from Gigabyte. We'll use two case fans this time, both made by Noctua. The first one is their amazing NFA1225, which will be out in black next year as well. Yay! And NFA1215. For our RAM, we got a 16 gig of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. For storage, we'll use EVO 860 from Samsung, which is a 2.5 inch SSD, as well as an EVO 970 from the same brand. It's a super fast M2 SSD. We'll air cool our i7-8700 CPU with Noctua's awesome little NHL9i. By the way, big thanks to Jacob from Noctua for sending us their new Chromax Black Edition of the same cooler. Now grab your Mjolnir. By the way, a quick disclaimer, the case you see here is still a prototype. Type. A couple of things that will be improved for the production models are no strange differences in color and glassiness between the different parts, no screw holes on the outside, tighter corner gaps, and an improved GPU bracket. Cool, so let's go. First, unlock Mjolnir by turning the lock knob 90 degrees counterclockwise. You'll find it on the back of the case. And yeah, Mjolnir does have a power button, and it's on the back of the case as well. Now place the case vertically and carefully remove the enclosure. Now we've extracted the core. Basically, it's where we mount all the hardware. This is the CPU side, and this is the GPU side. Now grab your pliers and carefully cut the cable ties on top of the core. This will free the cables for the PSU and power button. Now let's install the GPU. First, unlock the racer cable. Then insert the GPU and lock the racer cable again. Insert the GPU bracket through the back panel and secure it with an M3 countersunk screw. Use the included hex key. Now let's install the air cooler. First apply the thermal paste. We use a small dot or a P method. And don't use too much, it won't help with cooling. Next put on the air cooler and secure it. This may differ somewhat between different coolers, so make sure you know how to do it for yours. Now it's finally time to mount the motherboard. First, pop in the IO shield and be careful not to bend it. Now align your motherboard with the IO shield and let it rest on top of the standoffs. Secure it by screwing it down with the four included 632 screws. Last, insert the racer cable into the GPU socket. Now we can add the PSU. Secure it with the six included 632 screws. Now it's time to install the 2.5 inch SSD. If your data cable is too long, like ours, you can try to bend it the same way we did, but more on that later. Now place your case fans on the bottom rails. We suggest configuring both as intake. Trust me, we've tested all possible combinations and this is what gave us the best thermals. Now secure the fans. Now let's talk cable management. It's not going to be a hassle in this build, so this one is optional. Here are the pre-bent GPU cables, the CPU power cable, the SSD data cable, and the SSD power cable. First, plug in the SSD data cable. Now do the cables for your CPU cooler and the two case fans. Now on to the 24 pin motherboard cable. Next, install your SSD power cable. Then plug in the GPU cables. And last but not least, snap in the CPU power cable. Now, let's move on to the power button. I usually push it through the racer cable. Secure it to the front panel connector pins on your motherboard. Be careful, if you break them, you'll basically have to get a new motherboard. Now add your RAM sticks and be sure to align them correctly. Push them down until you hear a click. 
If you've got a Mjolnir Aura, this is a good time for you to install the RGB equipment. First, connect both LED strips to each other. Now install your Molex cable and plug it into the 5V RGB controller cable. Plug one of the LED strips into the RGB controller and then connect it to the 5V cable. This one is optional, but I prefer to hide the controller behind the GPU cables. Finally, plug the power cable into the power supply. And would you look at that, the core is now fully equipped. Now carefully reinsert the core back into the enclosure. And that's it, we're all done. So if you thought this was interesting, I suggest you go and check out Alex's water cooling tutorial and subscribe. And hey, don't forget about the launch on Kickstarter on November 26th at 4 p.m. Central European time. Cheers!